Hi everyone, this is Tim from Midwest Hunting Outdoors by Two Dumb Asses. Today's episode is going to be about putting an electric fence to protect your, your food plots. So stay tuned. Hi, this is Tim and Dole. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumb Asses. A podcast about the outdoors, hunting, and, and being a steward of the land. Hey, if you like what these two dumb asses are doing, please hit the like button and subscribe today. Hi everyone, welcome to Midwest Hunting Outdoors by Two Dumb Asses. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be basically going through some basic uh, setups for electric fence for protecting your food plots. I don't know about you guys, I have a couple of food plots that I really like to protect during certain parts of the season. And uh, in order to that, have them get to full maturity for when I want to hunt those fields, I use an electric fence. I started this uh, last year as a kind of a test. And uh, I had a couple requirements. One was I wanted a electric fence that I could put up and take down fairly easily uh, so that I could move it between food plots. So we used this uh, electric fence this year on the sunflower field to keep the deer out as we've talked in future epi and past episodes. However, I also wanted to use it for some of my deer food plots. So I wanted something that was movable and so I did a lot of research, um, and for the most part, I would say I'm pretty happy with what I've done. I started... Hi everyone, this is our my late season food plot. And as you see, we're putting in the electric fence. My food plot looks pretty dismal. We have not gotten any rain in like six weeks, or like a quarter of an inch or half inch. It's been horrible. Just enough to get everything to germinate and then kill off all these little small, small plants. But uh, anyway, that's not why you're listening to this. What you're seeing here is, is I've got my stakes in. And again, these are my seven and a half foot fiberglass, three eighths inch uh, rods. And a little zoom in here just a little bit. And what you start to see is, is these are the connectors that I have and how they connect. Pretty slick. I do three strands as you can see. And so what we're doing is, is putting this all up. And then you see here, I've got these T posts in my corners. I'm going to put one of these in each of these corners to kind of stabilize the whole fencing system. So you will get deer to come in here, but uh, as long as you stay on top of it, it won't be too bad. So a little, uh, thought I would show you just a little bit about the setup on these corner posts. You see that I put this fence post, this T-post in, and then what I do is, is I, I use these screw in, screw on, uh, connectors and I think those are pretty important on uh, corners because you want to make sure you keep your wire away from your t-post otherwise you're going to ground it out and essentially not have not have very uh, good obviously you're not going to have connectivity and so what will end up happening is, is you have a lot of deer in your in your uh, thing so I put these posts all about uh, 10 foot apart roughly and um, what I found to be best on where I put these connectors is knee high, waist high, shoulder high. And that seems to have the best luck with regards to keeping the deer out. All right, a couple things on clips. As I told you, this is a screw on clip that fits onto this 3 8 inch hole. And I think this would actually probably go for an, up to a half inch is what it looks like. But pretty slick, very easy. You just web this through. These can be kind of pricey. I think they're Again, I'll get you guys the prices, 40 cents a piece, something like that. So as the deer got into my plots, they were popping these, and they, when they pop, they seem to go a long ways because I don't seem to find them. So I was looking for a cheaper alternative, and they have these little snap-ons. So these little snap-ons are quite a bit cheaper, like 15, 20 cents, made in China, sorry, across my fingers. But what you see is, is it's a snap-on, Harp clip is what it's what it's called for a three eighths inch rod, um, and then you see that item number three two five three one zero. That's what these are. They seem to work pretty slick. Um, and to put them on, to put them on, you basically put this, put your rod right in between, and then all you do is twist it. Boom, and they're on. The one thing I don't like about these, if you want to adjust these up or down takes quite a bit of force versus those other clips those other clips it doesn't take quite as much the item number on these screw-on clips 
is right here. Again, they're called a, a screw-on clip. I apologize for that. I'll get that on the on the description. But it's a 325-400 is the item number. And again, those are a little beefier, a little more expensive. Um, I've, I've got plenty of both. But uh, I do probably, one of my tactics, I'd probably do a acre, acre and a half food plots, what I have enough for. And anything over an acre, acre and a half, what I do is I leave that out and I leave just for those areas to where I can, I can be in range and everything else I leave for the deer. And you'll notice the big difference. They'll, they'll find that and they'll start to understand what that electric fence is and they'll eat all around your electric fence and it'll be a dramatic difference between what you have inside your fence and outside. And, uh, and then I'll peel this fence down probably one to two weeks before uh, shotgun season and, and then they have no problem finding it. So I hope this video is helpful. I'll give you one more last snap shot when we get this fence done and I'll, I'll show you how we hook up the Energizer. A little bit about braiding is you're going to run out of wire. It's never exact. One of the things I do typically is, is I will basically just tie a basic square knot to it and dump. take a basic square knot I'll double these both up and this is why I like that little expensive wire that they give you that or line twine is it makes sure that you're gonna get contact and it doesn't short out and that's gonna be good enough I know that I'm making contact here and the fact that I've got these little tails helps to it's more it's easier for the deer to see that there's a line there and so I don't trim that off at all and that's how I'll leave it and then we'll just continue stringing our our wire okay a couple things so these are these corner posts and as I was showing you you see how I have those positioned with that tightener back against that t-spring I have these zip tied on here and we've got our line that's coming through here as we web that through and it's not touching that T post and that seems to work pretty slick. I started with what's called an Energizer. Uh, this is an S1000 solar powered, comes with a battery. Uh, it's a few hundred bucks. I, I would say, hey, for the most part, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I'm going to still say I'm going to give it one more year. My first year, it was really teaching the deer what an electric fence was. So I had a number of instances to where they would still go through the electric fence. But this year I did not have that problem. So I'm going to still wait to say, hey, is this one enough, powerful enough? Uh, we're going to be in the process of moving this now to another food plot. A couple things. This also came with uh, ground rods. So I have three copper ground rods. And the critical thing about those is making sure you get them in the ground. And you'll see here I've got a, three of them and they're not completely in the ground. They're probably about a foot above the ground. So I've only got about two foot of depth in them right now. The deeper you can get them, the more power you get to your energizer to, to, shock your, uh, to shock your wildlife. So when I put this in, the ground was just so hard I could not get it in any further. The other thing that they tell you as a tip is, is periodically come out here and water, water your grounding rods. And that's just to improve the conductivity so that you can get more power out of your energizer. Completed, uh, but with the help of my wife today on her birthday, uh, putting in this electric fence. Um, as you can see, we went with three strands. I've been with three strands probably since I started this. Um, the deer do get in it, into it. I've heard people say, hey, you need to go four strands. I'm sure that would be better. Uh, it's a lot more wire, a lot more wire connectors, etc. So. I chose to go with three and I've been happy with three. I'll let you guys decide what's best for you. Uh, we've got our grounding rods in and we poured a couple buckets of water on them to improve the conductivity. I can assure you that the fence is working uh, through tests. And uh, hey, I spoke also a little bit about those connectors of snaps versus the screw-ons. And uh, the screw-ons are a little easier to weave your wire through but the other thing that I learned today as I did this because I just bought these connectors here this last last year is they're a little harder on your wire and I think if you're using that three-year wire and you're using those snap connectors uh, it's going to deteriorate your wire pretty quick 
So just a heads up there. But uh, hey, if you guys have any questions or uh, or comments, feel free to either drop one on the video or uh, drop us an email. And if you like what we're doing down here in this right corner, there's a uh, spot where you can click subscribe and if you, it really helps us out. So as we start to uh, close out, be safe, have fun, and get outdoors. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.